folks, Captain Mike here from Salty Cape. Today I'm east of Chatham on Cape Cod, vertical jigging the hokey sand eel jigs for bluefin tuna. I have my old friend Eric Harrison on board fighting a fish behind me. Fish finders lit up. There is tuna, sand eels, and all kinds of bait everywhere. And uh, let's, looking forward to a great day of jigging. So the approach we're doing today is what I call the search and drop and just idling along and um, basically what I'm doing is steering near the birds, the whales, the life and uh, I break for tuna. So I'm watching my fish finders. I got a high frequency, a low frequency and my side scan going and when I see this fish finder light up with targets I'm going to take the boat out of gear, give it a little bit of a check and reverse to stop the boat and we're going to fire those jigs down. So the fish finder's lit up, there's some targets on the bottom, so I'm going to send this jig down to the bottom. Now I tend to fish these slow when tuna are keyed in on a certain depth, and looking at the fish finder, they're very clearly on the bottom. So to fish it slow, a lot of times I'll just do the twitchy jig, where I'm just having that jig twitch, dance, dart, the jig's fluttering back and forth. Twitchy jig works best with their jigs um, on lighter gear, say eight ounce, eight and a half ounces and down. I'm just twitching that jig. You, you, know, you see, there's not a whole lot of rod motion. If you can just picture that jig just dancing and darting. So I just twitch it, just real simple. You now, if I feel like I've drifted out of the bottom, these fish are really hung up on the bottom. I think they're grubbing on sand eels is what it looks like on the fish finder. So I'm just gonna let it back down and just get back on the bottom. And it's twitch jigging. Whoop, just had a bump. Oh, there we go. And that's how you twitch jig for tuna. He doesn't know he's hooked yet, but he will. There we go. Fish on. So everyone's hands are full, whether it's fighting a fish or holding a camera. So I'm gloved up. I'm gonna gap this guy myself. And what I'm gonna do is put the rod in the holder leader this fish. Good shot. There you go. Nice clean shot in the head. Lost my microphone. Can you hear me now? And I will hang this staff up out of the way. So that was reasonably easy. I'm gonna get this fish bled quick. Then I'm gonna go help. Eric with his fish, Jack with his fish, and uh, you should see the fish finder back at it. Get this guy on ice and start releasing some of these beautiful tunas. You can fish the hoagie sand eel jig any number of ways, fast, slow, and in between. So I just sent this jig to the bottom. Now, I'm gonna start with a twitchy retrieve. That's where I just make that bait dance and dart, that sand eel jig, you know, fluttering at a very stationary depth. I use this technique primarily if I'm trying to focus my jig at a specific depth. So twitch, 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 twitch. And then sometimes I'll follow that with a speed method. And that's where it's pretty much as simple as reeling it up. The advantage of this method is it's getting jerks and dances and flies through the water column, so now you're covering all levels of the water column. So sometimes I'll do that for a portion of the retrieve, and then go into sort of a modified slow pitch, just a, like a long sweeping rise and drop of the jig. And then I'll uh, bring it to the top some more, do the slow pitch, and then go right back down to dropping the jig to the bottom. Now, while it's dropping, I do want to point out that at any point in the jigging game, you can get hit from below with the tuna emerging toward the surface. And that can be the most subtlest of hits. And uh, sometimes it feels like you've hit bottom, but if you know you shouldn't be hitting bottom then, gauge the reel and reel down because you've got a fish on it and he's swimming up. Other times the hits can sort of feel like a, almost like a scuff hit, like a tap tap. So they hit it sideways and then go up and you feel a little pressure. 
You know, might even feel like a dogfish or a cod, which are two common bycatches out here. I treat every hookup like it's a tuna because I can't tell you how many times I've had something that didn't feel very heavy and it turned out to be a very large tuna. It was just working the bend out of the line as it swam to the surface. So treat any bump, weirdness in line as a potential fish till you're certain it's not. But again, just to wrap it up, fish these things fast and slow, slow and twitchy if you're targeting a specific depth, fast if you want to get all levels of the water column, but like what I'm doing today, combination of the three, twitchy, slow pitch, and high speed. I'm learning how to use the hoagie sand eel jig today to catch tuna. I've never caught a tuna on a hoagie sand eel jig before. So I took the advice from Mike and just dropped it down to the bottom, did the twitch jigging on the bottom, cranked it up 30 or 40 feet, let it slide back down, did some more twitch jigging, and that's resulted in two tuna so far. So that's pretty good for learning how to use these jigs. So textbook situation, Eric sent that jig down to the bottom, few cranks up, and here we are, tuna doing its death spiral uh, on fairly heavy duty conventional gear. Now we, see, we saw how fast this fish came in, and that's really the power of a heavy duty conventional setup. Um, I personally like fishing on a spinning rod a little more, but I'm caught on something, here we go. And here we are, headshot. This is a beautiful fish. Perfect fish, perfect landing fish size. Not too big for the table. Easily landed, easily released. But uh, sushi's on the menu for tonight, so we're gonna properly care for this fish and get right back at it. Nice job, Eric. So we boated a number of bluefin today every single one of them coughed up these small sand eels. So it's really no surprise why this hoagie sand eel jig was so effective today. I mean, they were literally keyed in on sand eels. Now, um, the sand eel jigs come in a variety of sizes. And today uh, we found the smaller sand eel jigs were getting hit the quickest. The larger, heavier sand eel jigs were better suited for uh, getting down to the bottom. The downside to the larger jigs, you know, we we're getting some bigger fish, maybe some bigger than we were ready to manage. But, you know, if you're keyed in on these little guys, you want to get away with the least amount of weight you can use. You know, for that reason, the six and a half ounce and the eight and a half ounce are probably the most versatile sizes for tuna. But a lot of anglers, particularly in New York and New Jersey, in a little less deep water, uh, more shallow, however you would say that, um, in, in smaller bait. Um, and perhaps smaller tuna than we get here, uh, they'll go, go as low as the three and a half and four and a half ounce um, sand eel jigs. Now, the, the cool thing about the sand eel jig is it's a universal design. It's literally the same jig you'd use for stripers or fluke in deep water or tuna. So it's part of, ho what we call it hoagie, a universal series. They're, you can use them on anything, anything on each sand eels, which if you look at species all around the world, pretty much every game fish in salt water uh, eat sand eels, they may call them sand lances in different different locales, but it's all the same same bait fish, same forage, hoagie sand eel jigs, fish them fast, you can fish them slow, and in between, just a very versatile lure, excellent for tuna, in this case, keyed in on small sand eels. So these larger jigs, like the 16 ounce sand eel jig, can be a little bit cumbersome um, to attach to the rod, especially when you're running, they can bounce around and beat all up beat everything up including the jigs themselves uh, i'm going to let the tuna do the do the beating up of this lure and i just have a simple canopy tie that i just wrap around the foregrip of the rod and just keep the lure nice and tight and that'll prevent the lure from swinging around and banging and bouncing stuff the two jigging setups we had today. Obviously a spinning outfit in my left hand and a conventional outfit on my right. I'll start with the spinning outfit because I have it here. Um, you know, the reels we use are uh, the spinning reels. Um, oftentimes I'll use a 
Stella 18,000 reel. Um, this is a heavy duty setup. I have a 100 pound test hollow core on this outfit. And today there was a mix of uh, bigger fish um, mixed in with the smaller 60 inch size bluefin tuna, the ones we were targeting. They're all keyed in on sand eels. My fluoro leaders for this style fishing, they're all wind on leaders, but uh, the pound test will vary between 60 all the way up to 130. Today we're using 130 pound test fluoro because we do have these large giant sized tuna mixed in and it gives you a fighting chance to land a bigger fish if you uh, happen to tangle with the, uh, the wrong fish. Now the setup we have here, this is a five and a half foot jigging rod from St. Croix. It's their Mojo series. It's a rod I've had for a few seasons. It's, uh, you know, it's got some battle wounds, but it's a heavy duty stick. Um, and I have it rigged here with the eight and a half ounce sand eel jig. This guy's a little beat up. We caught some fish on this today. Um, you know, the, they're keyed in on sand eels. So needless to say, the sand eel jig, you know, true to its name is the perfect lure to match the hatch with these fish. And all the hoagie sand eel jigs come paired with the teaser assist hook. They're all tuna grade. Now you'll notice the rigging in front of this lure. I crimp rather than tie a knot. I crimp with a little piece of chafe gear to a high quality uh, 130 pound test crane swivel uh, to the split ring connected onto the, um, the solid eye on the sand eel jig. Now the reason why I do this is, well, two reasons. One, the swivel's gonna help alleviate any pressure the fish may get at different angles during the fighting battle, but also the split ring is gonna allow an easy swap out for lures I might switch to something else or you know, if a lure gets beat up or if I want to change color sizes or whatever. Um, you, know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, tie new knots every time. Just so much faster just to pop one lure off of the split ring and a new, ring, new lure back on. So the spinning outfit, why would you use a spinning outfit over a conventional outfit? Um, well, for starters, I prefer the jigging action with a spinning rod. I'm righty, so I'm using my strong arm, my right arm, to do all the rod action, and my less dominant, my left arm, to crank the line. So if I'm fighting a fish, everything's using my strong arm to pump the fish. Um, but that said, a spinning rod sometimes can be a little more cumbersome during the battle than a conventional outfit. Now, some folks prefer the conventional outfit in a battle more so than a spinning rod, but before I get into that, I'm just gonna break down this outfit here I have uh, rigged with our larger sand eel. So here I have my conventional jigging outfit. Now this is a little heavier duty than you often see for uh, jigging outfits. I also use this very, very same outfit, obviously different lure. If I'm trolling out in the canyons or you know fishing, you know, any blue water anywhere for um, say school bluefin tuna, you know, yellowfin tuna, you know, east, this outfit is strong enough for tuna, say up to four or 500 pounds. Um, it's got a Talica 25. I have it spooled with 130 pound hollow core and I have a jigging wind on leader, floral leader. So this is a 25 foot floral leader. Um, this has also got the 130 pound test fluoro crimp just the same way I have it attached to my spinning outfit goes to a crimp, to a little piece of chafe, to a split ring, and then directly to the lure. Again, with the split ring being the final connection of the lure, it allows me to swap out sizes. Um, the, what we've been doing today, we've had the lighter jigs on the spinning rods, the six and a half ounce and the eight and a half ounce jigs on the spinning rods, a little lighter outfit, fishing further up in the water column. Um, the conventional outfit, we had the larger jigs, the 12 and the 16 ounces, you know, sometimes we've been dipping, it's almost 300 feet of water. These heavier jigs targeting the tuna suspended or hanging just off the bottom. Um, we found the heavier jigs in the deeper water were the name of the game. The downside to using this outfit with the heavier jigs is while we were catching, you know, the 60 inch, you know, fun, happy size bluefin, we also were hooking some larger fish that we weren't exactly targeting with these, you know, relatively lighter outfits. Um, so the way I've been doing it on my boat, again, the lighter jigs on the spinning outfits, the heavier jigs on the conventional, fishing all levels in the water column, 
Jigs are attached the same, just different sizes, easy swap outs. So the takeaway for today was you mark them, you drop them. We caught fish fast and slow, all levels of the water column. We had bigger jigs for down deep, the, less, the lighter jigs for the mid-level of the water column, conventional spinning. Most of the fish were a nice, happy 60 plus inch fish. Unfortunately, there were some toads there. Uh, strategy today with the big fish is if you hook something too big to land on your gear, break it off quick. Don't, don't make it a big ordeal. These are big fish. They're going to have a better survival rate left swimming. Uh, we're here to target the, you know, the, the fun fish. And um, also the name of the game is being the right place at the right time. That we were. Bluefin tuna keyed in on sand eels. Hokey sand eel jig, perfect combination.